In today's video, I'll be showing you how to take your footage from looking like this, which is very contrasty, very sharp, and very digital looking, to looking a little more like this, which is far less contrasty, it has that nice soft sharpness thing going on, and it looks far less digital than the image that you'd normally get out of a mirrorless camera. As mirrorless cameras continue to get more and more advanced, it means that the imaging sensors are becoming more and more perfect. But perfection in this use case is actually the exact opposite for what most people are looking for. And instead you want that imperfection in your image to make it look a bit more real and cinematic. Um, so like, I mean, the way that I can easily liken this is to phones and you know how phones uh, will capture an image or video is sometimes it looks a bit too sharp, a bit too contrasty and just a bit too clinical so that it actually ruins the entire image. In my opinion, there's three key things that will make an image look more digital but in a horrible way, and that is contrast, sharpness, and highlight roll off. And it's a combination of those three things that I think make an image actually look quite bad, even though it might be more perfect. Um, so if you can control those three things in conjunction with each other, then chances are you'll get an image that you're more happy with. Before we tackle the post-production side of things, let's first and foremost talk about what you should do in camera to get the best image quality possible. And a lot of this might be teaching you guys how to suck eggs, but just bear with me because it is actually really important. And of course, the first thing is to shoot in a log profile if your camera or phone or whatever you're shooting with allows for it. Um, the reason being is because then you don't have the contrast, the sharpness, or the saturation baked into the final file, which means that you can further manipulate that when you come to editing your footage. Um, if your camera or phone or whatever doesn't allow you to shoot log, then just try and dial down the sharpness as much as possible. And also if there's option to as well, just try and desaturate it a tiny bit so you can have a little bit more leverage when you do get to editing. If you feel like your camera renders quite a sharp image straight out of the bat, like for example the S52X and the S52 definitely render a more sharp image compared to the S5 and the S1 for example, then you could always use a mist filter and this is what I do to get a more desired look out of my camera. Um, and there's many types of mist filters on the market at very different price points and they do various different things. Um, but mist filters essentially will give you less contrast, they'll take away some of that sharpness and they'll also bloom your high highlights depending on how severe or how strong your mist filter is. Um, so one of the biggest giveaways, like I said earlier, is a highlight roll off and sometimes that really clinical sort of digital look for me is when you can see almost the graduation or the lines of your highlights. So the actual sort of roll off of your highlights looks very sort of chunky and not as smooth and you know creamy and a mist filter will help you do exactly that. It will make the highlights sort of roll off in a more soft and gradual and dreamy sort of way. So using mist filters definitely does a lot to make your image feel a little bit more organic. Organic? <laughs> What's organic? A little bit more organic and more flattering. In case you guys are wondering what mist filters I use, I've actually got a bunch of them that do different things at very different intensities and strengths and stuff. And the one that I find myself using the most and the one that is, you know, on my camera right now is the Format High Tech Soft Silver Mist Diffusion Filter. And the one that I'm using now is the quarter strength one, not the eighth strength. But you can actually dial in with mist filters how much of that sort of dreamy look you want. Um, I find that sometimes an eighth is absolutely fine, but sometimes if you want to, you know, really, really lay that effect on thick, then you can use the quarter strength one like I am now. So here we are inside of Final Cut, which is the editor that I use for color grading, cutting, and everything. And I'm not going to take you guys through my entire color grading workflow now because I've actually got a separate video coming out about specifically that, so I don't want to give too much away. The thing that I really want to talk about is Film Convert Nitrate. And this is really where you can dial in and get that really nice film look and make your footage look less digital. Um, so I'm going to put this on now and you'll see a massive difference here. Check out the waveform and check out the image on the right as well. So here we go. And you can see here, like, I mean, if I toggle it on and off again, so if you see um, on the uh, waveform, the skin tones are sort of sitting between 50 and 78 and 80 IRE, I'd say, so they're coming in a little bit hot. And I do this purposely because I know that this, you know, has a sort of effect to sort of bring that back down again. And then when I put it back on again, as you can see here, the skin tones are landing very, very nicely between 50 and 75 IRE, which is where I want them to land. But more importantly, again, if I toggle it on and off again, 
Can you see the difference in the contrast and what it does to the skin tone? It makes the skin look a lot more smooth, a lot more natural. And again, if you look at the table, if I toggle this on and off again for the millionth time, and you can see that the contrast uh, or the difference between the light and dark areas uh, is dramatically reduced. Um, when using this. And I'll open up the controls here now so you can see what's going on. Um, but essentially, oh, let's not put it there. So essentially, I don't do too much with Film Convert Nitrate. Um, I've used Dehancer as well, and there's, you know, sort of schools of thought that think either Film Convert's a better one or Dehancer's a better one. To be honest, I don't really care too much. Film Convert does what I need to do, and it's nice and easy. And essentially, what it does is enable you to add your own film stock. So you can choose a myriad of film stocks here, and you can then dial in the chroma and the luma. So if I just show you guys here now, if I was to put the chroma the whole way up, you can see they actually get in the sort of color characteristics coming through on that particular film stock on this footage. And the thing is, is I don't really want it to look like a film stock. I'm not looking for a look right now. I'm just looking for the way that it behaves with the footage and the way that the, uh, the highlights and the shadows sort of behave. So if I dial the Luma the whole way back, and then I'll dial it back up gradually again so you can see the difference. So again, this is with the Luma completely off. Um, and then as you dial it up, what you're doing is you're essentially adding the sort of tone curve from that film stock, if you like. So I have it all the way up to 100, and this is why I use the Polaroid 600 one, because it's a lot more flat, muted, and in my opinion, it's nicer to look at. I much prefer the image with this on than I do without it. Um, and again, I mean, if I was to take this one off, um, dial this the whole way back, if I was to go to, let's say, the top one, which is the KD5207, I can dial in that chroma and the luma, and we can mess around with that as well. Um, uh, again, this is all personal preference here. I'll get more into this in the color grading video I'm about to do, but just so you guys know, I use the Polaroid 600, dial that chroma the whole way down and the luma the whole way up. And that is basically a massive step in getting nice, soft, uh, skin tones and making your footage look really nice and organic in my opinion. And then next we have grain response. So as you can see, I've got it set to 12 here. If you go too ham with it, then it does start to look very grainy as you can see here. So I only like to be very, very sort of minor with my grain if you like. I don't like it to look too much. Um, so I sort of leave it somewhere between sort of 12 to 18, I'd say is like the sort of sweet spot that I found. But 12 in this instance is absolutely fine. And then there's loads of things you can do. You can change the grain curve, the shadows and midtones. You can essentially color grade just using film convert nitrate. But I leave all this stuff here. I'm actually one of those people that don't actually take this software to its full effect. I only use those two things. I use the film luma and the grain strength and that is it. With everything else set the way it is. And and then sometimes if I want to add a little bit uh, of a different tint, I find it a lot easier to add uh, tint control inside of Film Convert than the actual native sort of, I guess, plugins on a Final Cut. And you can see here, you know, you can sort of dial it. If, if you want it to look a little bit more green or if you want it to look a little bit more magenta, you can dial that. But for this image right now, I'm pretty happy with zero. Um, so yeah, like Film Convert does a fantastic job and you can get it for any NLE, you can get it for Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, whatever you use. And it does cost a bit of money. I think it's around $120, $130 for uh, just a single NLE if you use one or if you want it to be compatible with all of them and get the license across all of the NLEs and I think it's about 50 or $60 more. Um, so it's a little bit of money, but I genuinely think it does a fantastic job of just taking the edge off of that digitalness. And that's why ultimately I always use this on every single thing that I shoot. Um, again, one more time, I'll toggle it on and off so you can see. So that's the before and then that's the after. Just the skin tones, man. It just makes the skin tones look so much better. And for me, one thing that I don't like about digital looks, like I said, is the way that they do skin tones. It just looks a bit too blech and contrasty. So that's pretty much it. It's a combination of these things that I've showed in the video today that sort of make my footage look a little bit less digital and take away that harshness that people normally don't like with digital looking cameras. Um, so what I do, of course, is shoot in log or decrease the sharpness um, and saturation in camera if I can. That's step one. Um, step two is to use a mist filter at varying intensities depending on the look that you're after to get nice bloomy highlights 
and soft skin tones. And then number three is using Film Convert and then dialing that Luma the whole way up on my preferred film stock that has the tone curve that I like. And then adding a smidge of grain if you're into that sort of thing. If you're not, then don't add it. It's absolutely fine. But yeah, that's how I basically get the look that I'm after. And I find it to be very, uh, very effective. I mean, I really like the way that the footage looks that I capture for my client work and stuff using this method. But yeah, guys, like I said, if you are interested in a color grading video that is coming soon, and if you want to know a little bit more about getting the most out of your Lumix cameras, then you should definitely check out this video next.